الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كنتم خير امه اخرجت للناس تامرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر ولتكن منكم امه يدعون الى الخير ويامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر واولئك هم المفلحون بارك الله لنا ولكم في القران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم انه تعالى جواد كريم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته please fill in the gaps in front of you and sit up uh, children please sit up adam come forward yes yeah come forward please and pay attention to to the imam to khatib what i'm saying inshallah you'll find them amazing gems there's a story about the acres of diamond it's an african story a very f- really appealing and a factual Uh, and they're really full of lessons for us the story goes like this there was a man you know who had acres of land and in that plot of land he had a small brook a small stream running through it and he wasn't doing well you know his farming wasn't giving him enough money to live comfortably he was always complaining and eventually he decided i'll sell it and go to valaitia no eh a lot of us did that as well you know <laughs> so he sells it and he goes to valaitia no he go he sells it okay but the man who came the person who bought that <coughs> he worked hard on the land but one day as he was crossing this stream he saw something glittering in the on the bed of the stream you know something shining you know really glittering and he put his hand and picked it up so he picks up this glittering glass like crystal and he thinks well you know this isn't just ordinary stone you know this is something really seems to be some kind of a possibly a diamond of some kind quite a big so he goes to the goldsmith and somebody who knows something about crystals and about diamonds and they examine it and they say well really this is diamond and how much is it well they couldn't estimate how many hundreds of thousands of dollars it's worth okay and the, the you know the lesson from that story is this Allah has blessed every one of us with acres of diamonds. Eh? It's another thing like that poor <laughs> and foolish uh, farmer, we can't recognize that. We can't see it. Eh? It's been glittering there for perhaps his father's time, his grandfather's time that diamond was there. But they didn't have the insight. They couldn't see what it was. But this man who came, he could see and i hope you know this is what i want to share with you okay our deen of islam is that diamond that valuable diamond nobody can actually put price on it it is precious okay it is a diamond that is really so valuable that it changes our lives from inside from outside from everywhere it is an amazing thing and first of course we've got to recognize that this is indeed you know something great and valuable we muslims of course believe in that but do we have evidence for it and i think that's where we need to learn and we need to seek knowledge the knowledge gives us certainty 
knowledge gives you the sense, you know what I believe in, is logical, makes sense, it's real, it's beneficial. This is why, you know, we keep on talking about the benefits. The Hadith books are full of the virtues and the excellence of doing this worship, doing that ritual, doing that, uh, reading this surah, reading that surah. There's almost, you know, uh, hundreds and thousands of ahadith extolling the virtues of reading Quran, Salah, charity, doing all those wonderful things. Why? This, of course, motivates us, encourages us. This is emotional. This is very good as well. Some people love to have that, and they, that is all they want to hear. That's good as well. But then many of us, we li now live in an age of reason, an age of science and technology, where until you have real rational and reasonable proof, you don't believe in it. You don't accept it. Isn't that true? Well, you should do. That's how it should be. But I know today it's not like that even. You know, there are people who can be fooled by what appears on their Facebook or what appears on their Instagram or on, on social media. Even if it is absolutely lies, fakes, untruth, we still, some, many of us sadly, still accept it. Okay? Without, this is how gullible we have become. Of course, the Quran condemns that kind of attitude. The Quran says, do not follow blindly, without knowledge, without reason. Because you are going to be asked about your eyes, about your ears, about your akal, about your heart. <coughs> How did he use these senses of ours? What it means, all those things are actually used for intelligence. For? For? Yeah, it seems as though Muslims don't like intelligence. Eh? <laughs> we seem to have lost it. Yet, you know, the Quran says, Ulul albab. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقْعُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah says, the aqalmand, ulul albab is what? Aqalmand, the most intelligent. Ulul albab is what? Who are they? Allah says, those who remember their Lord. Okay? Whether they are sitting, standing, lying down, they are always in touch with Allah. They are always remembering Allah. They are in worship of Allah. They are devout. They are pious. That's what it means, you know. They are fearful of Allah. They are conscious and aware of their duties as well. They are not numb people, okay? And we seem to have a lot of that numbness in us, all right? You know, listen, when I say these things, I'm not being critical, okay, of you personally. It's my job to be a critic of the society that we live in. And if that is what's out there, my job to tell you, okay, look, we've got to get out of that numinous. Eh? And I'm not the only one, you know, Isha Guru uh, and, and many other people like that who, who have, you know, understand. Isha Guru is the one who won the Nobel Prize for Literature a few years ago because of his book called The Buried Giant, in which he talks about this foggy world that we live in, this world where, you know, we're unattentive, we are numb. We don't know what's going around us. We are forgetful. What are we? So we're forgetful about our duty, who we are. We even forget who I am. Seriously. You know, when you're in that state, you don't know who you are. What's going to happen? You don't know what, what, what am I driving? Where am I going? Can you just imagine, eh? And this is what we've got to come out of. And the point I wanted to make through this story of the acres of diamonds is that, you know, you are sitting on something which is so valuable, <laughs> so precious. Do you know that? That is the point I'm trying to make. And I want you to go and look at that idea. Okay? Do I know how valuable this diamond that Allah has given me, this amazing <laughs> jewelry of gold, of platinum, the most valuable thing that Allah has given me, yet... My dear brothers, Allah has blessed us with this amazing. Now, one way of actually becoming really appreciative of this is when you share it with others, okay? So you recognize that I've got something 
worthwhile, I need to now share it. Share it with who? Others. People are around us. You know, recently somebody sent me this um, article in which uh, Starmer is saying, and, and it's a fake article, all right, and, and it's, Muslims are really fond of reading fake things, sadly. Uh, and so this very uh, in a serious kind of a scholar, well, I wouldn't say serious scholar. If he was serious, he wouldn't have. But he sends me this and says, can you investigate you know, where this was published by Starmer? And in that, Starmer is saying, and, and I, I say this is fake, Jan, yeah, most likely fake, fake Jan, yeah, is why we don't like Islam, all right? And I said, <laughs> you know, the Kafir doesn't like Islam. The Kafir hates Islam. The Kafir cannot stand Islam, yeah, no? And so if today, you know, the West is saying that, you know, Allah said this 1400 years ago, the Quran said, they will never be pleased with you until you follow their way. Until you give up your religion of Islam, they will not accept you. So what are you talking about? Is it that what we should be expecting? However, this doesn't mean, you know, that we become belligerent, you know, and we become... Um, uh, 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 people who are confrontational. No, that isn't our way. Particularly if you're a minority, you have no choice. We've got to be nice anyway, but we have to do dawah. What do we have to do? We have to be inviting people to the banquet of Muhammad sallallahu This amazing, uh, you know, uh, table, which is um, full of the most delicious foods and the most exotic drinks you can imagine. That is Islam, and that is what we need to invite them to. Okay? So we don't go down that l l line of confrontation. Yes, kafir is kafir. What do you expect from Mr. Star eh? uh, You know, well, he might actually. He's, he's, but those, those people who run Henry Jackson Society, those kafirs who, you know, people like Boris, for example, you know, he's a big kafir, Jana, who comes from a kafir family who was responsible for dismantling the Ottoman Empire. His father, grandfather were involved in that. How... They understand, okay? They know what this religion stands for and its power. They are aware of its power, yeah, no? Okay? So don't, you know, so, so don't uh, expect anything other. But as I say, we've got a real challenge living amongst the society of Pop. <coughs> How do we now invite them wisely? The Quran says, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom, okay? With reason, convincing them of the power and the beauty of this thing, all right? And this is what, inshallah, I'm trying to do, and Karimia and some of our colleagues and friends are trying to do, okay? Come and recognize this. But the important thing is my own people. We want our own people to recognize this. You don't know, like that poor farmer, okay? who wanted to go to Valait Jana and leave his own, uh, you know, acres of, acres of diamond. Acres of diamond. Forgot about that. He didn't want that. Instead, he wanted things out there. Eh? And of course, this is, you know, psychologists call this the, the, past, the pasture on the other side looks greener. Eh? There's lots of kore charne on it. And of course, you know, there's lots of fields. Because it looks more green. You know, this is, this is a, it's an idiom used to show, okay, look, everybody's always looking at the other, forgetting about their own. But what you have isn't just yours. It's been given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't be unthankful. Don't be unappreciative of that. Yeah, no? You know, Allah says, man is forever ungrateful for what he has been given. So let us not be amongst those ungrateful. Instead, let us be amongst those who are thankful, appreciative, who value this. So, so what do we do? Well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he, he variously encourages to share this. Otherwise, humanity will sink. Humanity will sink. Here is one hadith, you know, this is uh, Hazrat Nu'man ibn Bashir. He says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the person who stands up for the truth and likes others to accept it and preaches it and is confident about it 
is like the ship in which there are some people who are on the upper deck and others are in the lower deck. Okay? So the people in the lower deck, so they are on the river and instead of the people on the lower deck, instead of coming up to get their water supply, they say, oh, we're on the river. Why don't we take one of the planks off and get the water from the river directly? If somebody doesn't stop them, what will happen? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, brothers. So, what happens? MashaAllah, even in the masjid, Jana, Allah bless you, boys, Jana. Allahu Akbar, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al azim. You know, may Allah help the ummah. I just don't know what is happening to our little kids, teenagers. What is going wrong with the Ummah Jaina? I hope you can see this disrespect for uh, Allah's words and deen. May Allah help you, Jaina. I, I just cannot understand, honestly, Jaina, how you could sit in front of the Imam and argue with one another. May Allah help you, Jaina, teach you something. So, um, if, if those people on the first, on the upper deck, or even downstairs, don't stop this fool who's going to make a hole in the hull of the ship, what will happen? Who will sink? Just him. Will he just sink? Yes. My dear brothers, this is why, you know, standing up for the truth is so important. You can't say, oh, it doesn't affect me. I'll let it happen. It's affecting everybody. Everybody will be affected. Everybody will sink. Okay? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you know, he says that if you don't stop it, what will happen? Everybody, you know, all, all of them will sink Jannah. You know, if they don't, they will all sink. But if one person stops it, don't do it. Everybody will be saved. And, you know, today, you know, we have, alhamdulillah, certain degree of power at least through our social media. Ah, that is where your social media could be useful. Where you st speak truth. You tell truth. But that will only happen if you learn about the truth. Yeah, no? So do, you know, get, get to learn the truth so that you can share it with others and, and, and be able to see what is right and what is wrong. Yeah, no? You know, uh, this brings me to something about social media that I've been working on writing guidelines for it uh, with another colleague. It's a very big document. Inshallah, about eight, nine pages. We spent months on it. Guidelines for using social media. I hope uh, people will read it. It's on our website. We're going to be launching it uh, as part of my Friday Reflections as well. But in that I talk about how this wonderful, amazing and powerful means, social media is a device, isn't it? Very powerful. How do you use that properly? It can be very, very destructive. Can't it? It's already destroyed lives of millions of people. Millions, seriously. It has destroyed our children, teenagers, women, men, and the, those who haven't got the ability to discern. It destroyed the, in a big way. And inshallah, you know, I hope people will read those guidelines that you know, we put together. We're going to have web, webinars on them soon. But the idea is to spread it out. We're sharing it with people to get feedback. So do please, all of you, look at our social media guidelines. And that is where, you know, again, you know, you have opportunity to speak about these acres of diamond. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to see these acres of glittering acres of diamond on which we are sitting.